What's going on, YouTube? Culture Dog Sam Hatchback with another laser to spotlight review. And um, digging through a big pile of stuff, including a lot of stuff that I, I got recently in a lot. And um, so it's cool. Even a lot of the older titles that I, I you know wouldn't necessarily think to pick up uh, on Laserdisc, I'd probably grab on Blu-ray, um, are in you know, great condition on here, even though they don't have maybe digital sound or anything like that. But um, I figured, you know, I haven't seen a lot of these films, so let's get them all fired up, including... Hitchcock Saboteur, a uh, Encore Edition release, which is an interesting uh, kind of imprint that uh, MCA Home Video did. Started in um, in uh, 1985 was the first one. This was the 10th release on the Encore Edition um, series, which was 1986. And it kept going until, you know, 97 or so. I know a lot of people are uh, hot on collecting uh, Colossus the Forbin uh, project backed with Silent Running. Uh, later, that's usually what they did. They'd be double features with the gatefold. Um, but back in the early 80s, they were, you know, single titles. So, of course, like stuff like Frankenstein, Bride of Frankenstein, The Wolfman. Um, but, yeah, a lot of classic MCA titles. And I got quite a few of these Encore Edition releases in this newest lot. And I had never really thought about them that much before. Apparently, uh, one of the most recent Blu-ray big boxes uh, contains this film. And uh, it's a really uh, cool uh, Hitchcock flick from 1942. It's got... Um, from uh, Dial in for Murder, uh, Robert Cummings is the lead. And uh, Priscilla Lane from Arsenic and Old Lace is in here as well. Um, as is Otto Kruger and, uh, and Norman Lloyd. And it's just a cool, um, not really globe hopping, but like North by Northwest, a kind of uh, America hopping film. Starts off with a guy working at a um, military aircraft um, factory and is duped into giving a uh, fellow co-worker a uh, fire extinguisher that's actually filled with gasoline during a, a strange fire that breaks out. Again, one of the first early, uh, very like ominous images, there's this kind of like steel corrugated wall with this creepy black smoke kind of creeping into it. Uh, again, just showcasing Hitchcock's much-earned uh, position as, as a premier visualist. And um, this character, uh, Barry Kane... Of quickly comes into contact with a with a Nazi saboteur, and not to be confused also with sabotage, another Hitchcock film from much earlier. Um, but the uh, the Nazi agent accidentally drops some papers and leads this uh, main character played by Robert Cummings to uh, suss out his uh, his contact and the location of the contact. So quickly, obviously, things turn against our hero and uh, much uh, like. In typical Hitchcock wrong man fashion, and he's yeah determined to go solve this uh, scenario himself, and sets off across the country. And uh, first runs into Otto Kruger, who's this uh, ranch owner who you know denies having any information about this this mysterious character that has never been on the records as a factory worker. Um, at the, the plant that was damaged in the in the early sabotage. And uh, things get weirder from there. There's a scene almost like lifted out of, uh, was a Frankenstein or Bride of Frankenstein, where he befriends the uh, blind old man nearby. And his niece shows up, played by Priscilla Lane, who's kind of famous for uh, being a model on billboards, etc. And uh, they go on the run together, and she is uh, pretty much against uh, Robert Cummings' character through, you know, about a half of the film she thinks he's really a nazi spy and saboteur and is going to try and stop him whenever she can there's a great scene where you know he's in handcuffs through a lot of this portion of the film and there's a great scene where she's trying to run away on the on the highway and he's trying to you know cut his um his handcuffs using the engine of the car and there's another couple driving by as he you know captures her again and drags her kicking and screaming back into the car and that the old woman and the the neighboring car is like, oh, they're they're they must be so in love. <laughs> it's like really looked like he was about to do some horrible things to her. So it's got a lot of that kind of classic biting uh, Hitchcock humor uh, throughout, which is cool. And it's an interesting film in which, uh, much like Rosemary's Baby, in which all the kind of fine upstanding citizens are all Satanists. In this, all the fine upstanding citizens are pretty much Nazi agents, the people that help out are circus freaks. There's a great scene where they're hiding on a on a, a truck with a roving circus troupe, and uh, they're deciding whether or not they're going to help these characters. 
And so it's the weirdos and the outcasts who are actually the good people in this film. And when they eventually travel all the way to New York, there's a lot of high society members that are actually Nazi agents. And um, there's a lot of kind of like clunky, jingoistic, flag-waving uh, speeches giving towards, given towards the end. Apparently Dorothy Parker wrote a lot of that stuff and, and inserted it in, in there. A lot of people weren't really buying it because it, the film actually depicted pretty much anybody in uh, in either the FBI or in a position of of power or someone that doles out justice officially. They're pretty much all um, played off as as morons or idiots or easily fooled. Um, it's got a lot of great set pieces, uh, a lot of great locations, and it culminates in a great scene on the Statue of Liberty with a lot of effective mat shots etc. And uh, there is a controversial scene with the SS Normandy, which was toppled in uh, in its harbor slipway after a fire broke out, and it hadn't been scuttled for scrap metal until like 1946 or so, but at the time of this film, uh, there was a lot of conjecture about whether or not it would be sabotage, and Norman, Norman Lloyd's character kind of looks over at it and goes, yeah, like that. I was the guy that sabotaged it. So the uh, war office was pretty angry about it because, again, it implied that they were incompetent and allowed a guy to come on and set their ship on fire, etc. But yeah, it's a, it's a cool flick. Uh, this release you know, just has analog audio, CX encoded, and it's actually pretty long. It's 1 hour 48 minutes, so a uh, lot of activity going on in it. Um, it doesn't have any chapter stops on the first side, and the second side just has the theatrical trailer as a chapter, so not really much going on there in the ways of uh, chapters. But... Uh, Picture quality isn't that bad. I mean, I fired it up on my uh, CRT tube TV, and it looked, you know, pretty sharp. And uh, then again, I tried it on my um, on my projector, SXRD projector, and uh, it doesn't have that like real flat look like a lot of like public domain black and white transfers have. Uh, it's, it's detailed. It's nuanced. It's got some shadow detail in there. So it was a lot more uh, competent uh, transfer than I was really uh, expecting. And the the contrast is is really vivid and uh, yeah, looks great. Again, you know, if you don't have the Blu-ray, you happen to get this in a lot. Uh, this condition, this is in great condition, so I'm definitely uh, gonna keep this. Uh, really fun flick and uh, good Hitchcock. So thanks for hanging out, and we'll be back with some more Laserdisc Spotlight reviews. I know, right? Go, go figure. Thanks, everybody.